Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is our epistle reading from Romans chapter 10. I'd like to reread the last verse of that text. Romans 10 verse 17. So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of our Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, this past week I had a very interesting conversation with a gentleman who talked about wanting to strengthen his spiritual life and get closer to God. And as I spoke with him about that, I told him that for me, the way to get close to God is through Jesus. And spirituality without Jesus is not genuine spirituality. And that seems to be what Paul is talking about here. Paul is, is referring to, in this section again, talking about the Jews who are cut off from Christ. In chapter 9, Paul begins with his lament over his fellow Israelites, saying that, that if it would be possible that he be accursed from Christ and they be saved, he'd be willing to do that. Well, here in chapter 10, he is talking about how we are drawn to God, how we are part of God's family, and he centers it all on what he calls the message of God. Christ. He begins in Romans 10 at verse 5 by saying, Moses described in this way the righteousness that is by the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. This message of Christ, Paul says, is the source for true righteousness. He begins by saying that Moses talked about the righteousness of the law, that if you could keep the law perfectly, you would attain the righteousness that you need in order to stand before God. The drawback to that plan is we can't, we don't keep the law of God perfectly. And our best attempts still fall short. So through the law, we are not able to attain the righteousness that we need. But Paul says there's another way. It is the righteousness based on faith. It is a righteousness that comes through the message of Christ. And what does Paul say about this message of Christ? He says, it is near you. You don't have to go on a quest. You don't have to go on a pilgrimage in order to find your connection to God through Christ because the message of Christ, he says, is near you. In your mouth, in your heart. Then he goes on to say what happens with the mouth and the heart. With the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Now here, Paul is not trying to separate heart and mouth, belief and confession, justification or salvation. They all go together. What fills our heart flows from our mouth. 
If faith in Jesus fills our heart, then it cannot help but flow from our mouth. Faith leads to confession. Heart and mouth are linked, as are salvation and justification. We believe and are justified. We confess and are saved. Well, you can't be saved without being justified. And if you are justified, that means you are saved. Justification is the only way to attain the righteousness that we need to stand before God. Justification is God's verdict for the sake of Christ that declares you to be not guilty. And as Paul is talking about this word being near you, if we were to translate his words into Texan, we would not use the word y'all. He's not talking about y'all as a group have this message of Christ, this word near you. No, you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Every one of you individually has been given this saving message. It was given to you most likely when you were baptized. That is when faith was created in the heart. And if you were baptized as an infant, that faith continue to be nurtured and then as you were taught you were able to confess with your mouth your love for Jesus maybe as you sang about his love for you in the children's song Jesus loves me this I know heart and mouth belief and confession salvation and justification for you and you and you and you and you and you So, the message is near you. But this message of Christ is also meant for all. Because now Paul does broaden out his language. Not to just talk about you as individuals, but to talk about this being for all people. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Salvation and justification are not meant just for a select group of people. They are meant for all. And the promise is given to all, whether Jew or Gentile that those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's what Peter did in our Gospel reading. Our Gospel reading was the account of Jesus walking on the water and once the disciples realize it's him, Peter says, let me come out. And the wind is still blowing and the waves are still churning, but Jesus says, come, and that's what Peter does. And he starts walking toward Jesus on the surface of the Sea of Galilee, but when he hears the wind and sees the waves, his attention goes away from Jesus. And he's overwhelmed with fear. And he begins to drop into the sea waters, and before he goes under, he cries out, Lord, save me! And immediately, Jesus saves him delivers him from those deadly waters, brings him safely to the boat, and calms the raging storm. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That literally happened for Peter on the Sea of Galilee, but it also happens for us and for all who call on Jesus. We also are saved from drowning, not physical drowning in a body of water, but rather spiritual drowning in sin and unbelief. We are delivered from our sin. We are delivered from our unbelief. We are delivered from the guilt that is rightfully ours because we have not 
maintained the law of God perfectly. And this message of Christ that delivered us from drowning in our sin and guilt is the message that is intended for all. So the message is near you. The message of Christ, his love, his sacrifice, his deliverance. The message is for all. No one is excluded from the work that Jesus did through his death on the cross to redeem this world. No one is excluded. So it seems like all the bases are covered. The message is near you. The message is out there for all. All the bases are covered but one. Paul shows what is lacking. How are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? In other words, the message does no one out there any good if no one delivers it to them. And so Paul talks about preaching and being sent. And I think that those words mislead us. Because when we think of preaching, we think of pulpits and pastors. When we think of being sent, we think of missionaries. And not all of us are pastors who preach from pulpits. Not all of us are missionaries who are commissioned and sent by the church. But if we keep that narrow focus, we weaken the work that needs to be done. Because yes, people need to hear this message of Christ. How can they believe in him if they never heard of him? And how can they hear of him unless that message is heralded? Not preached. Heralded. By those who are sent. Not by mission boards, but by baptism. All of us are heralds of the good news. This is what the shepherds did. After they saw the newborn Jesus in Bethlehem, were told that they went forth praising God and telling everybody that they could what they had seen and heard. That's heralding the message of Christ. Telling other people about what you have seen and heard of Jesus. Remember, faith in your heart leads to the confession of your mouth. And not just when we stand and confess our faith during worship, as important as that, as it, as that is, but it is also when we bring our heart and our mouth out of this building and into the world and encounter people in restaurants and in neighborhoods and in workplaces and in friendships. What is in our heart, a living, vibrant faith in Jesus, is to issue forth from our mouths. Because how can they call on him? in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how can they hear without the people of Christ heralding the message of Christ, bringing the good news of what Jesus has done? Because faith does come from hearing and hearing through the message of Christ. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.